Hi, welcome to our Two Minute Tuesday for September 3rd of 2019. Our title for this week is the Yield Curve as a Timing Tool. This one's going to, this Two Minute Tuesday is going to be longer than usual because I've got a lot of information I want to share with you concerning the inverted yield curve. The two year and 10 year Treasury yield curve dipped below zero on August 27th. The yield curve measures the difference between yields on two different bond maturities. Normally, investors receive a higher yield for a longer dated maturity because it's even more difficult to forecast the farther you look out into the future. Every once in a while, the reverse happens and the yields on longer dated maturities are actually lower than those with shorter maturities. This is re referred to as an inversion and is considered a predictor of a coming recession. Using the yield curve as a timing tool is extremely difficult. The yield curve has inverted before every recession since the 1970s, but the lead time has varied tremendously. This chart shows the inversion circled in red. The gray shaded areas on the chart are the recessions. From an investor standpoint, predicting what will happen to stocks is actually more important than predicting than when the recession will come. The yield curve inversion may mean a recession is coming, but should not be a signal for equity investors to panic, even though that's all you're hearing on CNBC and all the pundits on TV are talking about. In fact, on average, stocks have done very well for 12 and 24 months after the initial inversion. Each inversion is different, so it's also informative to look at each one individually. When the yield curve first dips below zero, I mark that date and look at the performance of several indexes over the next 6, 12, 18, and 24 months. I use the S&P Total Return Index for large cap stocks, the Russell 2000 Total Return Index for small cap stocks, the Barclays Aggregate Bond for Fixed Income, and two indexes representing high and low momentum stocks. The momentum, momentum indexes come from the Ken French Data Library. I use the six portfolios formed on size and momentum series. This series allows me to focus on large cap and mid cap stocks so the results aren't skewed by low liquidity stocks. This series is also a conservative measure of momentum because it separates the universe into three momentum buckets instead of the usual five or ten buckets. This table shows the average forward returns of all the observations. 12 months from the first inversion observation, the returns are good across the board. Two years after the inversion, the returns are still good, but the rate slows down. Momentum returns remain strong along with the broad market 12 months forward. The spread between high and low momentum is decent after a year, but unlike the broad indexes, the spread really accelerates during the second year. Each yield curve inversion has been different. I will examine each one individually next. On average, the forward returns are very strong, but in some cases, they haven't been. Let's take a walk back to August of 1978. The yield curve inverted in August of 1978 began with a quick sell-off and high momentum was hit very, very hard. Once that sell-off was complete, all of the indexes except for bonds performed very well. To me, this looked like more of a sharp correction in rebound rather than a recession-induced bear market. Please note, I don't have Russell 2000 returns for this time period. The next inversion in our example was in September of 1980. This instance began with a quick, quick rally which lost steam quickly between 6 and 12 months. About a year in, bonds rallied sharply, leading them into the generational top in September of 1981. Equities moved sideways in a trading range for two years after the curve inverted. It didn't hurt you to own stocks, but you didn't make much money either. The exception was the momentum laggards. Poor momentum stocks had a brief run between 6 and 12 months after the inversion, but were to be avoided for the rest of the time. In January of 1982, after a shallow correction over the first six months, stocks spent the next 18 months tacking on tremendous gains. Bonds also performed very well during this time. Everything was strong across the board. High momentum stocks did very well, but pulled back along with small caps during the final six months. The laggards closed a huge performance gap at the end of the period, but were generally to be avoided. December of 1988 brought the first yield curve inversion after the market crash of 1987. Wasn't much of a problem for investors. Returns were strong across the board for 12 months, 
momentum laggards, and small cap stocks performed during the second year after the inversion. The spread between high and low momentum stocks remained robust for the entire sampling period. In June of 1998, the market sold off because of the currency crisis. Like a lot of the yield curve inversion instances, it's really tough to determine how much the inversion played a part in the correction. But like the observation in 1978, the market rebounded quickly and we didn't suffer a long-term bear market. There was a big laggard rally once the correction ended, which is similar to what we saw at the end of 2018. Once the market bottomed, the forward returns were very strong. The February 2000 inversion is the instance that spent the entire 24-month window in a bear market and was to be avoided. This was also the second instance after a double dip of the yield curve below zero. The momentum laggards were very volatile during this period. They started out with decent returns but quickly fell apart. That performance profile is really a function of how a momentum index is calculated. The first 12 months of the window, the momentum indexes were adjusting to new leadership. Technology moved from leading to lagging, and the former laggards worked their way into the leadership group. By the second 12-month window, those changes were reflected in the indexes, and the laggards, now full of technology, performed poorly in 2001 and 2002. Bonds had a nice run during this period and provided a nice offset to declining equity prices. The inversion in late 2005 didn't affect stocks for quite a while. There was a momentum correction during 2006 where the laggards performed much better than the leaders for a very brief period. Large and small cap stocks did fine up until the very end. Investors had plenty of time to book gains before the markets finally cracked in late 2007. Momentum investors did very well once a laggard rally was over in 2006. Momentum performed very well in the middle of 2008 so it was a good couple of years for the strategy. The laggers started to falter in late 2007, but high momentum did just fine. The spread 24 months out was very strong for momentum, and that would continue for another six months into the middle of 2008. In summary, an inverted yield curve does not mean investors should immediately avoid equities. If anything, investors would have been better off on average just holding stocks for two years after the yield curve inverted. Most observations contain some sort of sell-off within 24 months after the yield curve inverted. The reality is that the market, it corrects all the time. There have been many corrections following a yield curve inversion and plenty that were nowhere near an inverted yield curve. It's important to realize an inverted yield curve, it is not normal. When things are abnormal, you should be on heightened alert. But looking at past instances of inverted yield curves, it doesn't seem prudent to proactively avoid equities. Let me repeat that. It doesn't seem prudent to proactively avoid equities. At Balzer Wealth Management, we use other indicators for signs of market weaknesses. But yet an inverted yield curve has historically preceded recessions, but hasn't always been a bad sign for equities in the near term. This has been Roger Balzer, Balzer Wealth Management. If you have any questions, thoughts, concerns, please get in touch with me at 440-610-3012 or shoot me an email, roger at balzerwealth.com. Make it a great week.